Recently, due to a change in Adobe Premiere CC 2019 and the new update, I reluctantly had to change out my entire desktop editing setup. I didn't want to move from my iMac to a PC. What I ended up finding in my research was being able to use an AMD Radeon RX Vega 56 with my MacBook Pro. First off, let me say that I am not a techie by any means, and I wasn't even looking to upgrade my editing setup for at least another year or two, but my arm was slightly twisted on this one. Last week, I had an error message pop up while I was editing on my iMac in Premiere CC 2019. When I restored the project, I had a white screen in my program monitor, and after an hour or two of frustration, I decided to call Adobe Tech Support. Adobe Tech Support told me that my computer specs were now outdated to run CC 2019. At this point, I had two options options. Drop down to Adobe Premiere CC 2018 until I was ready to upgrade my computer or completely remove the iMac from my desktop editing setup altogether. I did some research on some more minimalistic desktop editing setups and I discovered that Apple has actually recently started to support external graphic card units. You may have recently heard of the Blackmagic eGPU, which is an external solution that Apple has started to support as well as sell in their stores. But to my understanding, the internal graphics card in the Blackmagic eGPU cannot be upgraded as well. So as soon as that graphics card is outdated, you're gonna have to sell the unit. You can't actually replace the card inside of it. Therefore, like my iMac, it will also outdate itself soon enough. And this wouldn't work for me since I wanted to build something that I could actually update myself whenever I needed to. I stumbled across a video by Max Yuryev who spoke about eGPUs and MacBook Pros and then it clicked. I was going to build my own box. I picked up this breakaway box and an eight gigabyte AMD Radeon RX Vega 56 card. And I've linked all of these that I've used in the description in this video, but this is actually the same card that they use in one of the newer models of the iMac Pros. I also ordered a 34 inch LG ultra wide curved monitor. One, because it has decent color calibration across a massive screen and two, because it looks pretty sweet. Once it all arrived, it was time to rebuild my setup. And did I mention that I'm not a techie? I've never built any kind of computer device or box in my life, but this little box was actually pretty easy to put together, even for me. Once everything was hooked up, installed, I powered it on and hooked up my MacBook Pro. I was even able to still use my palette gear, which at this point in my editing, it's kind of become an essential. I booted up Premiere CC 2019 and this thing ran like a dream. 4K playback was super smooth, no problems whatsoever playing with all kinds of color corrections and effects that I would throw on a full 4K timeline. And I did a couple of render tests with my 4K footage on my MacBook Pro as well as with the eGPU. Now this is where there's a slight flaw in this system. What I expected out of this setup was pretty sizable render differences when it comes to the actual rendering of a video, but it just didn't deliver. A five minute video in full 4K, color grading, LUT, and film grain took 18 minutes and 49 seconds using the H.264 codec on my MacBook Pro. That same render using the eGPU with my MacBook Pro took 16 minutes and two seconds. Not much of a difference there, which I was a little disappointed in. I was hoping that this eGPU setup would just be able to like crank out videos much quicker. So I had to start questioning maybe where this bottleneck was coming from, which of course I expect to a degree when connecting a laptop to an eGPU unit like this one. I think I narrowed it down to being my 2018 MacBook Pro. Now I could have gone with the i9. It was a newer chip at the time when these first released, which is when I bought it. But at the time that they released, I was hearing that there was overheating issues and throttling and that people weren't getting the power that they wanted out of these MacBook Pros or the i9s as compared to the i7 processors, which actually seemed faster in a lot of cases, according to some of these blogs. So that's why I opted to get the i7 processor over the i9 at the time. That may be somewhat of the bottleneck here. With that said, don't let me deter you if you are still considering the setup that my playback has been still super smooth with 4K, color graded footage, effects applied. I'm still able to edit that I don't have to drop down my resolution in order to do so. So obviously that is a big plus for editing. I still accomplished what I wanted out of this project because as you recall, I said I wanted a system that was compatible with Apple that I was able to just come home with my laptop, just set it down on my desktop and be able to plug and play with a better, more powerful system. So still to me, this is a much better solution than what I had before and still works pretty well for me. Now with great power comes a couple of small disclaimers. One of which is I kind of was forced into upgrading to Mac OS Mojave. The reason being is because it further supports eGPUs. It has this 
little tick box that you can select prefer external GPU when using certain apps. So I ticked that for Premiere Pro and After Effects. So I definitely recommend upgrading to Mojave if you do want to use an external unit. Next, even though Apple does support eGPUs, some of the applications you're running on your Mac may not fully support them. For example, in Premiere, although I am able to render and play back and do all kinds of things with the eGPU, there's a couple of specific settings when using Premiere that it just doesn't allow you to use the eGPU with. For example, Premiere gives me a hard time when I try to do a VBR2 pass on an H.264 codec using the eGPU. The only way that I've found a workaround around this is some people were talking about going into your motherboard settings and changing some things around. I'm not confident enough to be able to do that. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of holding out hope that a Adobe Premiere will maybe support this in the April 2019 update of Premiere CC. Now, when I was building this out, I had a choice in which graphics card to get. Now, I chose the Gigabyte brand AMD Radeon RX Vega 56 over the 64 because of its power consumption, its graphical ability. And I don't have raw red footage or anything like that, so this really suited my content creation needs. And finally, and this is a very big warning, never, ever, ever disconnect your eGPU from your MacBook Pro without first properly disconnecting in the Apple toolbar. Now they've made it very simple by adding this little icon. You click this, it drops down and you simply select disconnect eGPU. If you don't properly disconnect your eGPU, it's not good for your graphics card. It's not good for your MacBook Pro. So just properly disconnect and don't be a rebel. All in all, I'm extremely happy with the new editing setup. I have more power, it can render faster. I can upgrade it whenever I want and I'm not gonna get left behind in Adobe updates. But of course with anything, if you're deciding to do this, I do encourage you to do your own research, find out what works for you because what works for me may not also work for everyone. But of course, if you're interested in my setup and want to see some of the components that I've used, I've linked everything down in the description below so you can check them all out. And I'd be very interested to see what everyone else is using. If you recommend going with a different graphics card for different abilities, we'd love to hear it in the comments below. So techies, share your information below. We'd love to hear what the perfect build out would be for this setup. I'll be back with new videos on editing shortly, but until next time, we'll see you later.